every picture tells a story, especially where Hispanic artist Judy Baca is concerned. She is a muralist whose canvases range from a Skid Row hotel to a barrio cultural center in East Los Angeles. Street murals are one of the most accessible forms of art. By their very size and location, people from all walks of life can appreciate the pictures. Judy Baca has been a painting these murals around Los Angeles for almost 20 years. I caught up with her recently at the site of one of her most ambitious projects. When did you decide that you were an artist, that you wanted to paint, that you wanted to uh, live a life uh, devoted to art? Very early. I think very early in my childhood I was really interested in the arts. It was the way that I could um, communicate best. Yeah. And it was my um, solitary activity. You know? yeah. But in the 60s I really sort of made a commitment to doing this kind of work. This kind of work is what? This kind of work is paint, painting large-scale works that have particular meaning in, in the public yeah. areas uh, for the community I paint them. We're now talking about murals. Yes. Define it for me. Well, a mural is not an easel painting. A mural is a site, usually in a public site, um, painted to work with the architecture so that it is architecturally um, developed. In other words, the, the design fits the architecture. It is a piece that, in my mind, is um, connected to the people who see it. Um, connected to them in what way? Well, for example, you, you, you would be sensitive about what you would place in one community over another. Um, you would look to expressing the particular concerns and interests of a, of a Hispanic community if you're placing a Hispanic a, a mural in a Hispanic and community. And if it's an Asian American community, you would have something relative to their culture and their experience. Right. Asian yeah. American. Yeah. For example, in some in a, in a highly orthodox Jewish community, you might be care, careful about the types of images you would place. Yeah. So that a mural has that kind of dialogue that goes on daily with the people who come in and out of that space that it's painted in. Do murals have a long history? I mean, uh, were they part of the European tradition in art? Uh, is it an American phenomenon? Do you see them in Asia? It, yes to all of the above. Yeah. Murals have been pa being painted um, since prehistoric times. I mean, we, we see the, the cave, work, cave yeah. work, right? right. And as, as it's gone through history, people have um, put their brushes to large-scale works over and over again. And, and one of the, um, the most, um, in more contemporary times, one of the most um, fertile periods for the production of public, large-scale public works was in Mexico. And so that recent tradition in the 20s and 30s of, of Los Tres Grandes, the, the great maestros who painted murals and told the whole history of Mexico through the painting of those murals, is really, I think, what's been a, a major influence on the American production of murals. Was there a time when they became very popular in the United States? I mean, is that of a recent origin in the last two, three years? Um, no, actually, it's a little longer than that. Um, in the 30s, during the WPA, the, the Works yeah. Progress Administration, when, when Roosevelt put artists to work at plumber's wages, there were uh, many murals. Public buildings were decorated. In fact, you can go to old post offices and various places like that, and you'll see some of the work done from that period. When you do a mural, um, what do you choose for a location? Well, in, it's been very, it's varied. I've painted from the bottom of river channels to the sides of freeways. Um, and in each case, it's been having something to do particularly with the community that it's in. The Great Wall is in a flood control channel, right. not a desirable place to paint. Um, but because the flood... Because if there's a flood, it'll wash away, or...? Just because it's sort of horrific to be in, you know, an endless conduit of right. concrete in the heat in the summer and uh, with stagnant water all around and yeah. having to bring everything in and drive yourself in the water uh, down a channel that's miles long. Um, you know, the worst place I ever painted was the Harbor Freeway in Los Angeles. Hanging <laughs> because you were worried about cars or falling or...? It, all, of, all of it. I was like, uh, we were... There were ten murals commissioned by the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee to, to decorate the walls in the downtown area for the uh, 1984 Olympics. And so many of us did a f six to eight month stint hanging off the freeway walls, painting a... What's the social good of murals? What does it mean to, to, to people in a neighborhood? Well, it's varied. You know, some murals really are pieces that are, um, uh, have some commercial backing and are basically are meant to simply uh, adorn a, a public building. They're and, like decoration. Yeah, they're more decorative or they're more fine art, simply just placed in the building for some kind of visual yeah. effect. Yeah. 
um, and sometimes for advertising effect. Um, some murals are placed um, up with a play on a, on a, on a like Trump Loy, a play on the reflection of another building or yeah. giving some kind of enhancement to the physical space. And other murals, um, I think there's a very strong tradition here in Los Angeles of murals that are meant to relate to, specifically to creating some kind of social good at the same time that they're making a, a, a beautiful visual And sometimes statement. they have a social message. Very often they do. It, uh, there's a long tradition of that in muralism. And um, particularly the work that I've been involved has been in that vein. Do you think you may be instilling in some of these young people the drive, the desire to be an artist? Well, it seems to be so, actually. We've got um, 10 years into the project now, and we're beginning to see an, an impact. What I'm hoping we're instilling in them is an understanding of the importance of their own history and a sense of self-worth. When we come back, more of artist Judy Baca and the Great Wall of Los Angeles. Stay tuned. With NBC primetime firmly in first place, network president Grant Tinker left for new challenges. A look at his ambitious new project tomorrow on Nightwatch. What were you whispering about? We are now standing on a bridge overlooking the flood control channel. What's happening here? This space, which was um, uh, a kind of an eyesore, and uh, this was really originally a, uh, a river. Right. Um, and it was, it was um, concreted in by the flood control district and the Army Corps of Engineers to keep it from overflowing in the rainy season. And when they did that, they created an eyesore right in the middle of a community. Um, what we did, what they asked me to think about, was what could be done with this space. Yeah. And so I actually began to think about designing with a conduit river channel bottom, with a social at atmosphere in this particular area, which yeah. is an area that's sort of the focus of many different ethnic groups, and producing a narrative on the history of all the people who make up Los Angeles. And so I began to address a series of social issues and brought together 250 young people from different ethnic groups, about 40 historians, about 50 artists, and produced a half a mile long mural. And it, it goes by decade? It starts with um, no less than prehistory. Yeah. <laughs> Moves very rapidly through to the 20s and then is uh, painted um, in 350 foot sections uh, each summer uh, that we have painted 
and um, goes through decade by decade to the 1950s. We're not done. We're starting the 60s. We're just now beginning yeah. again. And how does how do you do it? You have you do the painting, or, or you and 49 other artists do the sketching, and then the kids, the young people, uh, fill in color. Well, it's very systematized now. It's actually very structured. And then we like an assembly line here. Yeah, and, so we're talking uh, about not only not just an assembly line, but an in, a way of, of getting input from lots of people that I've developed. It's basically, for me, I think of myself more allied with conceptual performance art, or art that is really at its base conceptual, yeah. than I do perhaps a decorative mural painter. My interest is to work with uh, the historians to develop a concept of what the 60s might have been like for these various ethnic groups. What was it like to be black in the 60s? What was it like to be Hispanic in the 60s? What was, what was going on for the Native Americans? That's what we're looking at right now. What was happening to labor history? What was happening to women? Um, and then figuring out the most important events to include. But that's not my doing alone. That's my doing with lots of people telling me, poets, writers, thinkers in Los Angeles, who say, you cannot do the 1950s without talking about Chavez Ravine. Mm -hmm. And so then we begin to look at what that issue was, how it affected that community, and then produce images that will say that. And then the kids actually come in to help paint it. But blueprints are developed before they arrive. Yeah. I'm looking down, and it says uh, Tomas Alva Edison. Right. Who was known to me all my life as Thomas Alva Edison. Right. Um, is there a story there? There's a very interesting story there, and it's a very controversial one. We sim we simply painted um, a segment on Thomas Alva Edison um, to cast a kind of question on his birthplace and on his heritage, because there's a lot of evidence um, that we saw from historians who were doing specialized research um, to. Um, toward the claim that uh, Thomas Edison was not Thomas Edison, but was in fact Thomas. Tomas Alva, and was born in Mexico. And in fact, in Mexico, there is a house that is marked that says, this is the house that is. of Thomas Alva Edison. <laughs> right. And we ought to know because right. he was born here. We right. have records. So we loved it because we kept saying, Tomas Alva Edison was a wetback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what did the good people in Cleveland say? Uh, they said that's not true, and that uh, they were, I got angry letters from school teachers, elementary school teachers. Saying you were disparaging our history. I, I say, in my response is that only, we only ask the question that we re-examine that. I also see Paul Robeson yes. uh, in a mural on civil rights. Right. Um, he plays a very central, uh, he's a very central image um, because he's, He's placed right alongside the McCarthy era. Many writers in Hollywood and many um, performers were blacklisted, and he was one of the blacklisted folks. And I think probably people would know him better if, if some of the things that occurred hadn't occurred. But he went before the House in Un-American Activities, and he said, I thought it was particularly great, he said, when they said, well, if you don't like America, why don't you go to Russia? And he said, because my father was a slave and because my people died to build this country and he said I'm gonna stay here and have a part of it and then he dropped his glasses at the end of his nose and he said is that clear so I thought that was pretty gutsy and so we painted a pretty gutsy image of him a uh, um, full 13 feet high yeah. but he was a powerful man anyway very yeah. amazing man I very mean, you, you uh, do rich. capture the strength of him a rich character um, face. Um, a man of real integrity uh, next to Joe McCarthy Right. And how would you paint the picture of Joe McCarthy? Well, we painted Joe wrapped in a red flag um, with a trash can made up by HUAC and people sliding off the blacklist into the trash can and little pink typewriters tied up and various people who are sort of wasted by the, um, uh, the fear of the Red Scare in the, in the 50s. You also devote um, a segment to the mural makers. You have some of the people that like Tony Carrillo and Victor Castro and others? Well, each segment is um, designated to um, the people who participated in that production. And those kids play a very vital role. Um, some of the kids come back year after year, and they actually receive re raises and become crew leaders. Part of leadership development is part of it. So we credit everyone who works. In the end, what would you like it to be? I really would like to see it be a a narrative, like a film, like a piece of film in the public that tells a story of the kind of courage of people to, who, who had to overcome incredible obstacles to be contributors to a society that in some cases didn't recognize their importance. And I would like to see it kind of be an unfolding uh, narrative. Is it part of what you like that murals are so 
available to the public? Is that part of the magic of it for you? That's what I love about it. It's not, it's something that can't be owned. It's something that belongs to everyone. It's in the daily life of the people who run in the park, who, who come here to see it. Um, we have a great number of international visitors who come and, and walk the wall. And, and I think as you walk this long narrative, you can feel history. It has length, it has depth, it has a physical being. It's a continuum. It becomes images, it becomes real. And by doing that, it makes history something that we can make reference to in a different way. Reading a book is really not the way we can reach some people these days. But to, to be able to walk so many feet per decade and to feel those huge images in the public area, seeing them and fill your eyes, it has a different meaning. The illusion of prosperity becomes something different when you see it. But mural artists will never get rich because they don't sell their work, do they? No, <laughs> that is one small problem, yes. Yeah, so the whole, whole business of how one um, values your own work. Unless they're commissioned, unless they're right. commissioned in the beginning, I guess you could, could well, argue, but since it's mainly public supported. It is mainly, this particular piece is mainly public supported. Yeah. But I think the point is that how one measures oneself is really in a certain way what this mural is about. And the value of your work as an artist or the value of your contributions in history and your families, it's all the same. And if the great artist in the sky comes to you and says, <laughs> okay, it's time for an accounting, um, and tell me what's the most important thing you've done, what would you say? I think that I, the most important thing I've done is to um, be available to create change in a community in a way that I believe in and to change myself while I was doing that. I became part of this process, and it happened to me, too. And I learned my history, too. And you're the better for it. Absolutely. I learned a great deal in this process.